Welcome back here on the Three Rivers Orthopedic pregame show, counting you down to kickoff between Seton Hill and Cal U. You heard from Coach Isaac Collins. Now it's time to talk with junior defensive back Phil Moreland here on the pregame show as we get you ready for the Griffins and the Vulcans. And uh, Phil, you've had a really good season uh, for yourself so far, and we talked about on the broadcast last week that it looked like Slippery Rock was actually kind of trying to keep the ball away from your side of things. Was that the case last week? And kind of talk about your season up to date. Again, had a pretty good one. I think ever since the Lockhaven game, the Lockhaven game was really like my breakout game. Ever since that game, teams haven't really been trying to throw me the ball. But that's really like my goal, though. I try to like make teams scared to throw me the ball when they watch film. And it's your individual goal, but then that helps out the defense because it gives the offense one less option, right? You right. kind of take away that side of the field. That makes them a little bit more one-dimensional. Yeah, if I can take away their best player, then that takes away like one of our best weapons. Tough loss for your team last week, Phil, to uh, Slippery Rock. First of all, I want to ask you about Slippery Rock. What made them such a dynamic offense? Was it their ability to run, which they've done on everybody this season, that kind of sets up the pass? They really they had a lot of explosive, dangerous players on our team. And, like, we really – we kind of beat ourselves in that game. Like, we practiced a lot of, like, containing the bubble and things like that. But, like, when you watch it on film, like, we had a lot of little mental mistakes that really hurt us that game. Yeah, kind of talk to us about that. After you watched the film and after, you know, the guys went through the film sessions and everything, what, what were the breakdowns defensively last week? It was really just, like, small mental errors, like, like coverage, like busted coverages and, like, not getting off blocks properly or the wrong leverage, like, little tiny things that, like, add up to become a big loss like last week. Do you really think that it's because, again, of um, all the youth you guys have really on both sides of the ball? I mean, are you really working towards these? You see the progress being made, at least. I know there was mental mistakes being made, but do you think that's why, because of, uh, of the youth? And do you see the guys really kind of improving? Um, I don't know if you took a step back last week or not, but do you see in general guys proving? Yeah, we, we've been getting better and better every week, but sometimes, like, our youth does show. Mm -hmm. And, like, our, we, that's what us upperclassmen got to do to, like, help the younger guys get on board with like watching film and things like that. Uh, a couple of real tough losses to Slippery Rock and to Westchester against two of um, really the best teams uh, in the country, both ranked in the top 25. Uh, has to be tough on the team. What's the confidence like coming into tonight against uh, today against Cal U? Well, like, again, like we know we beat ourselves in those two games. So like we really control our own destiny. So if we like go hard and practice, we had a really good week in practice this week. Mm -hmm. So if we go really hard in practice and watch film and do all the little things, if we correct all those little things, we'll be a really good team. As you mentioned, uh, one of the upperclassmen on this team, I want to ask you what type of role you take in making sure the confidence level and everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing. Because again, this is a young team, and I know that you guys want to win more than anything, but you are still building this program with Coach Collins here in his second year. You guys still trying to turn things around and those types of things. So um, I know wins are very important, but it's also very important to improve each week, isn't it? Yes, like I've been, I've been a starter since my freshman year, so I try to use all my experience to help the younger guys and even the new guys that's coming in to help them like do what they're do what they got to do, learn the plays, learn the little things in the game that will like really change how you play. Talk about your game. I know we already did a little bit, but um, right now you're tied for tops in the PSAC and, and uh, breaking up passes. Um, talk about what uh, got you so ready for the season and just how your season's going so far. Well, I had a really good summer working. I worked really hard this summer, and I've been doing a lot better with watching film. Instead of like just watching like what plays they run, I really study each receiver. So when I go into the game, I can look at the receiver and like be able to tell what route he's about to run like every play. And doesn't that show, I mean, from a freshman from where you were before and just a couple of years later to a junior, I'm sure you have to feel that you've learned a lot and feel a lot better than you did as a freshman, don't you? Yes, all my experience. I use all my experience from each year to help me get better and better. That's what I used to work out this summer. Like, I knew I needed to work on, work on speed, work on some of my breaks. So I really worked on a lot of those things this summer. I got to ask you about some of the other younger guys in the secondary with you, uh, Otis Williams, Josh Falatovich, uh, Tanilius Walton, Ricardo Housen, and some of the other guys. Talk about how some of those guys are really, um, you know, stepping up this year. Josh is really among the leaders in the PSAC and, and, you know, getting fumble recoveries and interceptions and those. He's always around the ball. Nice to see him healthy this year. And, and some of the other guys, one of the things you guys have been able to do the last couple of years is force turnovers. Mm -hmm. Just kind of talk about, you know, the younger guys and, and some of the other guys in the secondary and how they're 
they're playing this year. Yeah, Josh, Josh is along with me. He's been a starter since his freshman year, so mm -hmm. I think he used a lot of his experience to help him in the game. And Ricardo, Tenelius, Otis, they're – they're new, but they're really like coming along. They they know all the plays and all that now. So now, like I just try to teach them like little things that they need to be better in the game. Phil, I got to take you off the field here for uh, for just a second. What got you into playing football? You come to Seton Hill from Cleveland Heights, Ohio, a couple of years ago. What got you into playing football in Cleveland Heights? Well, I started playing football in the seventh grade. Yeah, the seventh grade, I believe. And like ever since then, I just fell in love with playing football. So like. About 10th grade, that's when I realized like I really want to play college football. So I worked really hard throughout my high school career, and I got my grades right. I did everything I was supposed to do to get to where I am now. What was it? Did you play offense too in, in high school? No, like, I didn't. I never really like offense. No, like, just defense. Period. Yeah, huh? I, don't, I don't like offensive players, offensive plays, anything like that. So <laughs> you, I've been because you get to hit people as opposed yeah, to yeah. yeah. So like I've been playing defense, all defense since about like ninth grade. Well, you know they say the reason you know uh, uh, what do they say? Receivers are uh, on defense; they're defensive backs because they can't catch the ball on offense. Yeah, or whatever, I got that saying though, goes. <laughs> even though I do have a couple of drop picks this year, like I do have hands. Yeah, like I'm. I'm going to get a couple in the next couple of weeks. All right, all right. I like that. I like that guarantee. Uh, what's your pregame routine like? What do you do on game day? What gets you ready? Well, usually I'm the guy that doesn't talk to anybody before the game. I usually have my headphones on. I'm just walking around, making sure everybody's ready. I make sure I say a prayer to myself mm -hmm. before the games. And I just pray for my family, my friends, my teammates, all that. And then that really gets me pumped for the game. With this being your junior year, again, you've been here for the last three years, now your second year under Coach Collins. Is it, do you notice the, the, the program moving forward? I mean, do you notice a big difference in, in Seton Hill football, even from last year to this year? It's a huge difference from my first, second, and third year. Like mm -hmm. the coaches, um, my freshman year, this coaching staff was a very, very big step. Mm -hmm. And then even from last year to this year, we made a couple of changes. Coaches um, really instilled in us like what we need to do on and off the field. So like we we made a really big jump. And you guys see the bigger goal coming at the at the end. Yeah, right? like I've seen like our team get better every mm -hmm. year, like from freshman, sophomore, and junior year. And we we're going to get a lot better in the years to come too. Well, before I ask you about Cal U, uh, what are you majoring in? What's your plans after after college? I know you still have still have some time here, yeah. but what, what are you majoring in? What are your plans? I'm an engineering major, uh -huh. and at Seton Hill is a three two program, so I do um, three years here and two years at another school. But okay. I'm going to do three and a half, so I can play four years of football, mm -hmm. and then finish my engineering degree somewhere else. Do you have an idea where you'd like to go after Seton Hill? I yet? might end up going back to Cleveland, oh, there you go, go to Cleveland State, but that's in the years ahead. I still got football to worry about right now. Do you have any thoughts on LeBron coming back to Cleveland? Any thoughts on that? That was one of the most exciting things. Yeah, I'm sure it was. <laughs> from last summer. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, the whole city is really excited that our basketball team and all the other sports really are like coming up. Were you one of the ones that like burned his jersey when he left for Miami? I was, it you, still, you still yeah, liked him? It wasn't that serious. Yeah. But like, it's just a guy. But yeah. now that he's back, I like him again. Yeah, yeah, you like him again. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the Vulcans here, uh, your opponent here today. Uh, a pretty good passing game. What have you kind of seen from them on film uh, that they'd like to do offensively, Phil? Well, they have some pretty good playmakers on their team. But like, if I get, if me and all the rest of the DBs, if we really study the quarterback and their receivers, like, we should come out and have a really good game. Phil, thanks a lot for your time, man. Really appreciate it. All right, thank you. That is Phil Moreland, junior defensive back for the Seton Hill Griffins, our Griffins player spotlight. We'll continue live as we rejoin you from Moffett Field in just a moment here on the Westmoreland Sports Network, counting you down to Seton Hill and Cal U.